Hey guys, it's Janae Wisnett with the Mother's Treasure Paint Studio. Tonight I'm painting this really cute stingray from Diverse Woodworking. I'm going to go ahead and start and get my gray mixed up. So I'm using my big flat brush and I've picked up just a little bit of black and put it with my white and we're going to get a nice pretty gray and that's going to be our base coat. And so now we're done with our base coat. We're gonna go ahead and grab our hair dryer and get this dry. Now what you'll notice once it dries, as it's drying, this sheen and shininess will go away. That's how you know that your paint is dry. Anytime you have that reflection, it means the paint's still wet and you need to be careful. So at this point, I'm going to try to do some dots, but I want my dots to be blue and I want them to have a little bit of shine to them. So I'm going to try mixing some silver with Admiral Blue. So here I have my little sponge brush, and it's just a round brush. I'm going to dip that in the paint and then dip it over here on the stingray. And so what I'm going to do is dip it and then just kind of wiggle it just a pinch, and that's going to help the paint come off the sponge and onto the wooden piece. See? Look how cute. So now the key to making dots is that you try to make them the same distance apart. And then, so once you have these two, you're going to try to make a triangle out of the third one. And so you just carry on that same pattern. And so here I'm going to connect this into a triangle, imaginary lines from one dot to the other. And you'll notice that some of mine aren't just exactly perfect and that's okay because you know we're gonna paint a little bit over top of this so you're really gonna not notice the exact distance between each dot and you're not gonna be breaking out a ruler to measure it um, that's just a general guide and it helps you keep your dots a little more spread out and notice that I am doing incomplete dots I think that is really cute when they um, overlap the edge a little bit and so you can see where the dot would be if it was completed, you know, but you ran out of wood. So I just think that's really cute and it kind of keeps some consistency throughout the entire piece.
Okay, so now you can see we've got all of our dots. And I'm going to move this paint so that the hair dryer doesn't blow on it. And we're going to dry this off because we're going to come back over it and write on top of it and put some outlines. So stick with me while we get this dry and we'll be back in a little bit. Now I'm going to go ahead and do some outlines, and I want them to be a light blue, so I'm mixing some white and some of this Admiral Blue together, and I'm going to use a smaller round brush, <clears throat> and that's going to give us this nice tip, we're just going to bring it back toward us. Now, see how the line is small at the top and gets thicker at the bottom? That's because as, as you press down on the paintbrush, you're going to get a thicker line. So I've started with just a little bit of pressure at the top and pressing down as I go toward the end. And that gets me a much thicker line at the end. And we're just going to keep doing little outlines along our way through the rest of this piece. Cover his little tail. And now I'm going to do that same thing with this same liner brush, and I'm going to do it with black. So I'm just going to add a few black highlights here and there, um, just because I don't want it to be too um, dark, because then it'll take over the whole thing, and it'll really be the only thing you see. So just a few wispies here and there. And at this point, I'm going to write with chalk because I don't want to mess it up. And if I do goof with chalk, I can always erase it. And so I'm going to write Team Stingray. But I'm going to start with Stingray because I want to make sure I have enough room for that. And then I can center the word Team on top up above it. So I 
like that pretty good. So now I'm going to pick up my angle brush. It's just a small angle brush and I use it all the time to do my lettering. If you've seen any of the other videos, you'll see this is my favorite brush for lettering. And part of that is because um, it's small, so it always fits my lettering onto my piece really well. Doesn't make the letters too big, but also because it gives me such perfectly um, shaped lines. I don't have to worry about having little hairy um, pieces at the bottom of my letters, and you'll have that problem anytime you use a, a pointy brush or a flat brush. But since this is an angle brush, it just gives you a perfect edge. And I hope you guys can see this. I'm uh, loading my brush really frequently and making sure that I have enough paint on my brush. And that helps a lot with helping your edges be nice and clean. So now I'm going to do the word team right here up at the top in the center. I don't think I need to chalk that on. I may regret that decision, but right now I'm going to try to paint it without chalking it on. Almost there. Yay! And it fits perfectly. Look how cute that is. Now you can see all that shine on there. That means it's still wet and we need to dry it. So now I want these letters to stand out a little bit, and in order to do that, I'm going to give them a little shadow. So I'm using this little round brush, and I'm going to paint the underneath and the right side of each letter. I'm not sure if that's the color I want, so I'm going to think about that for a minute. So I want it to be darker. Right now that's a too bright to look like a shade, like a shadow. Um, that would be more on the top of your letter and the left hand side maybe. So I want darker. So I'm going to mix a little black with this silver and see if we can get a better color for a shadow. So I'm just going to go right over top of this. And I know that it's hard for you to see because right now it's very wet and it's given a big shine, a big reflection. And it'll probably be really hard to see until I get this dry. But you can see where I'm putting the lines. But to you guys, it probably looks a little more white at this point. But once it dries, it'll be a nice darker shadow. And it's just a little bit tedious but it really makes a big difference when you're doing your lettering. So 
So just try to remember you're going to paint your shadow on your right hand side and on the underneath. As if your light is shining from the left, the upper left. How are you guys doing? I hope you're doing okay on those shadows. It's easy to get about halfway in the middle and think, oh no, I've got to keep doing this on the rest of them. But I promise after you do it a few times, it gets much easier. You'll get the hang of it. You just keep trying. Okay, there we go. We're all done with that part. Let me lift it up here so you can see it a little bit better. I'm not sure if you can see it good without that glare. Now that I've gotten that far, I think I've decided I'm going to go ahead and add the highlight to the top. So this will go on the top left-hand side of the letters. You know, so our shadow is on the far right and the underneath. So we're going to do the highlight on the top left of our letters. I guess I better mention that I'm using just silver, not the silver that I mixed with the black, but it's just the silver that came right out of the bottle. 
I don't have anything mixed with it so it's nice and, and shiny and it's nice and light so it'll look really great.
I hope you guys can see how this is just making these letters pop off here. Um, I'm going to hold it up so you can see it, but it really looks great. So we've got our highlight on the top left, and we've got our shadows on the bottom right, and it really made a difference. It makes that look like it's standing up off of the stingray. And last but not least, I'm going to come in with a little bit of white and give this some little white streaks here and there. Not too much because we don't want to take away from what we've got already, but we want to brighten it up a little bit. So we're going to add a few little wispies here and there using this very teeny tiny little round brush. And going all around the outline and giving it a few little highlights. And it'll tie everything together with those highlights that are on those letters. I hope you guys can see what a difference that made. It br it brightened this piece up so great. All right, we're all done. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found it helpful, and I can't wait to paint with you again. We'll see you next time.